Now recently I was working on a project where I had to create a calculated column and reference the row value from a previous row context. Now let me give you an example. So here we have a small sales data and by the way you can download this data from the link in the description. In this data let's say you want to see the grand total of sales for each product in a new column. So basically something similar to sum ifs in Excel. I will show you how to do this using just one simple DAX function. But that is not all. I'm going to show you four more use cases of this DAX which includes percent of grand total, running total, count if and count if with multiple conditions. So if you are interested, keep watching. So the DAX function that we're going to explore today is called earlier. And before we dive into that DAX function, I'm going to mention that this one will only work with a calculated column and not with a measure. Now, since we're working with a calculated column, I usually like to go into the tabular view of Power BI Desktop. This helps me visualize the entire calculation in a better manner. Now, as you see, we have already imported our data set into Power BI. Now I'm going to create that first column that I talked about earlier, which was the grand total based on each product. Okay. So I'm going to do is click on this three dots icon, click on new column. I'm going to say product total and the DAX starts with a normal calculate function, which you already know, calculate sum of sales, but in the filter condition, we will write a certain filter expression which will enable us to reference a row context. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write filter. Please note that you would have to write this filter expression inside a filter function. Okay. If you write your filter expression without a filter function, then this earlier DAX function will not work. Okay. So I'm going to write filter, enter the table name, and then the expression would be product which is the product column of this data set is equal to earlier product. Now let me help you visualize what's happening here. Okay. What it's doing is it's calculating the sum of sales for this filter context. It simply means that it's going to filter the product column based on the current value that we have. Okay. So it's similar to doing like this. Okay. So once it has done that in the filter expression, it summed up the sales value. So if you sum up all of these value, you should get one, two, four, one, double seven. But that was just the sum grand total of each product, right? Now, what about if you want to calculate the grand total percentage, which means you want to see what is the sales percentage of this against the grand total based on each product. Now, since you have already created this column, you can obviously create a new column and just divide this by this. But I will show you to do this in just one simple DAX function without creating a new column. Okay. So I'm going to create a new column sales percentage. And I'm going to start my DAX with a divide function within which I'll say sales of this data set divided by the sum of sales based on a filter context, which is the product column. Okay. And here also we'll use the earlier function and that's it. So if you see, I can choose to, you know, format this new column as a percentage and you'll see that it is showing me the percentage value of the grand total. And again, I'm going to help you visualize this with a filter. So I'm going to choose one product here. And if you see it is divided all those rows based on sales and giving you the sales percentage against the grand total. So if you sum all these up, you will find it's 100%. 
All right, let's move on. The second scenario is running total or a cumulative sum. So let's create another column here, new column. I'm going to call this running total. And this column will again be based on first of all product, but I'm going to add one more condition. And one thing to note here is that in order to calculate running total, you need a unique row identifier. In this data, we have the sales ID. In case you do not have a unique identifier in your data, then you can always go into the Power Query and create an index column that will create that unique row for you. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to calculate the running total based on each product. Okay. So I'm going to write calculate. sum of sales and the filter context here is first is product and the second condition which I'm going to create using double ampersand sign is on the sales ID column. So I'm going to say sales ID is less than or equal to earlier sales ID. Again, let's just filter this data and see what it's doing. So let's filter one product here. And if you see the index starts from nine in this product and runs up until 19. And that's what exactly it's doing. It's basically went to this first row item here for index nine, which is the lowest item two double three five three one, and then summed up each value for each row. So it's summing up two double three five three one with six five one three eight, which gives you this number. And then it's summing up three five two one zero six with this number and which gives you this number and so on and so forth. Okay. Cool. Now let's move on. Now, how do you calculate count if in this? Okay. Now, again, with earlier, it's pretty simple. I'm going to create another column. I'm going to say product count. And by the way, I'm using product column as a reference. You can use any column you want. Okay. I'm going to say calculate. And here I'm going to count the product column and the filter context would be product is equal to earlier product. Close all the brackets. What this will do is this will give you the row count of each product inside your data. So again, I'm going to filter any one product here. And this is showing five for each row because in total we have five rows for this product. Now in the next scenario, what we're going to do is we're going to count the rows for each product, but we're going to add one more additional condition in it. Okay. And what we are trying to achieve here is we are trying to identify for each product. Let's say for this row item, if the sales was one eight zero four one six, I want to identify how many row items were present in this data, which are having a greater sales amount than this number. So let's see this with an example. Okay. So I'm going to clear the filter here and I'm going to create a new column and call this sales greater than current. First, again, we're going to start with calculate. And we're going to count the sales column and then apply a filter. The first condition would be obviously the product column because we're going to do it on a product basis. And the second condition will be inserted using that same double ampersand sign. And I'm going to say sales. is greater than earlier sales. And 
and that's it. Okay. Now again, we're going to visualize this. So I'm going to click on this product. Let's filter something out. I have four row items for this product. And if you look at the sales value, it says that 44378, there is no sales greater than this particular figure here. So all other figures for this particular data for this particular product are smaller than this number. Okay, that's why sales greater than current is giving us blank. But then in the next step, in the next row, it's showing that for 21009, there are three items which are greater than this value. So even by just looking, you'll see that these three items are greater than this particular value. So this number is correct, right? So these are five different use cases that I found for this earlier function. And I thought I'll share it with you so that you can also use it in your daily workflow. If you have any other use cases for earlier function, do let me know in the comment section. I would love to learn that. And in case you found value with this video, please remember to subscribe and hit that notification bell icon so that you do not miss any content that I upload. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.